so <clears throat> let's get started. Mm, I would like to, to 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 recap some topics in order to to continue with the class. So if you remember in the last session we we were checking uh, what are the accounting adjustments? Um, basically, accounting adjustments are this, uh, uh, those transactions that are made at the end of a period, uh, normally at the end of the year, depending on the period in which in which the the firms of the companies companies uh, need the information but most of them uh, most of the firm try to do that, uh, that those adjustments uh, at the end of the year so the accounting adjustments are these operations that we haven't recovered, that we haven't registered in the past. And now, in order to provide uh, a, a, a good information and uh, information with the uh, with quality, with uh, that reflects the the truth. Uh, we need to do some adjustments in the financial statements. Uh, some of these adjustments are uh, reversing. Uh, the, some of these adjustments uh, are in, in, in revenue section, cost of sales. Um, and remember that in the case of uh, cost of sales, if we are talking about uh, a, about a um, a company that uh, the operation, the main operation is manufacturing, we are going to uh, recognize the cost of sales uh, through three different, uh, we have the option uh, to register the cost of sales through three different uh, methods. And these methods are first in, first out, last in, first out, and weighted average. So the, the, the method or the way that we decide to take depending on the, um, the core or, or, or the business of the company. And uh, there is not a better, better way or a better or, or the best, I cannot say that the best method is first in, first out, or weighted average. There is not a, a correct answer. It's depending on the business and depending on the necessities of, of a company. And, and depending on that, we can decide which kind of method of evaluation and of inventory valuation we are going to follow. Uh, here in the image, you can see some examples that we were checking the last class. And here, remember, the, the, this was an, uh, a, 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 a practice case in which we, we uh, could see uh, what happened with the cost of sales in case we design each kind of uh, a method. No, we can, we can see here that depending on the method, the cost of sales is going to change. So it doesn't mean that, for example, the the first method is the most convenient because is the the method that uh, brings the the cheaper cost. Uh, this is not the thing. The thing is that the necessities of the company. So. Now, this is an example of uh, what would happen uh, through the, the, the different methods. Another thing that we were checking, uh, another, another adjustment that we were checking uh, was the irrecoverable debts and allowance for doubtful debts that are 
to a concept very similar, but at the end, I mean, the, I, I feel that the main difference is the level or, of certainty that we have in each of us, um, in each, in each uh, uh, concept, no? The recoverable debts is uh, something that is almost sure that we are going to lose. And the allowance for that full debts is like only to be conservative and only if in the case, uh, in order to get ready in the, if, if one of our clients or if one of the clients of the company and don't don't pay us or don't pay to the to the company so very very important uh, concepts to remember and these are another types of adjustments <clears throat> here are the the entries and then we would check we checked the <clears throat> the accruals and prepayments and basically the most important thing to remember in these uh, two concepts and curl, uh, curls and prepayments uh, is that we can recognize them uh, through the time. It's not necessary to recognize all the expense or all the, the, the money that we receive in a specific uh, month or in a specific moment. We can defer that money or we can recognize the expense of the revenue uh, during during the time, depending on the p or on the period that the accrual or the prepayment is covering. So these these are another adjustments that we can find at the end of uh, of of the year, or and these another types of uh, entries. Uh, he, here in these slides, we can see the, the concepts of prepayments, the, 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 the way of recognizing of recognized it in the financial statements. Here, the concept of the accruals and the way in which we can recognize it in the financial statement. And now, uh, the perception, uh, the perception is, um, concept that probably I'm pretty sure that we have heard but I would like to to show more about that concept and the term uh, depreciation refers to an accounting method used to allocate the cost of a tangible or physical assets remember that we have two different uh, fixed assets one that is tangible that we can touch and another, another type of assets, fixed assets that we cannot touch, like it could be probably a software or a technological platform. So both of them uh, has a depreciation. A depreciation is the, the value that, that, that the every year or every month or every period, the intangible or a, a tangible asset is losing. So the precision means that if we get a car uh, today uh, and we, if we pay, that, uh, pay for that car 100 pounds in one year, the value of that car uh, wouldn't be the same because of this depreciation, because of that uh, uh, loss in, in, in the value of the car that we are buying today. And if we uh, go in the future, this car will lose value. So basically this is the depreciation, uh, the concept of a depreciation. Uh, the, in terms of, uh, uh, accounting, uh, the precision is defined as the reduction of the recorded cost of a fixed assets. Here we are going to talk about more tangible assets instead of intangible, but basically the, the precision applies in both of the cases, uh, tangible or intangible. 
and 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 also other thing very important in depreciation is that depreciation is a method. It means that it's systematic. It follows uh, certain rules, uh, certain, uh, it doesn't change probably. So for that, we, we need to, to, to know the cost of that intangible or tangible assets. And we need to know the, the life that this asset could has. And with, because at the end, we need to, to, we are going to see that even when we have the asset, the value is going to be zero, probably in two years, probably in, in three years, but we are recognizing that lose in, in the value of the assets of the assets. So in a certain point, the value of the asset is going to be zero. Uh, there are many types of depreciation. It means that there are many methods to recognize a uh, depreciation, uh, including uh, probably the, the most common method is the straight line. And or, or we can find another forms like, for example, a uh, 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 depreciation that is more is faster, but the method is going to depend on the the the, the life of the assets. Uh, I could imagine that, for example, a platform or a system is going to have. Uh, probably is if it's not a very sophisticated technology or a very sophisticated uh, software, probably in one year, we can see that the value of that software is zero. So this could be an example of an accelerated uh, depreciation. So a depreciation that we can I have a very, very fast, but uh, the most common method is a, stri a straight line uh, method. Um, an example of Higgs asset uh, could be vehicles, office furniture, machinery, buildings, land, um, Obviously, depending on uh, the 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 core of the business uh, is the the life of the machinery of the the, the, the machines that the company owes. Uh, vehicles we can include in vehicles, cars, trucks, uh, another kind of uh, transport that maybe maybe the company needs to have, and. And land in a is in land and buildings uh, probably buildings could be a building in which the company has the 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 the, the operation uh, I mean the administrative uh, employees or probably building could be a factory so uh, buildings we can find different kind of buildings and land but in the case of the land is is an exception. Why? Because in the case of the land, uh, instead of uh, lose value, the land is going to increase the value. So instead of calling depreciation, we are calling amortization because it is uh, the, the land is increasing the value. It's because of the behavior of the market. If you, for example, if you wanted to buy a house 10 years ago, the value of that house or the value of the land uh, was cheaper than 10 years ago than nowadays. Nowadays, if you want to buy a house, it's probably much more expensive uh, at this moment than 10 years ago. And probably the value of a house of a land today is going to be cheaper if we compare of the value in 10 or probably in the next year. So is is a, is a trend in the in the in the in the market, no? The land is always uh, the value of the land is always uh, superior uh, in the future or through the time. 
it doesn't happen, for example, with vehicles, with uh, office furniture, with the uh, machines, with another kind of um, fixed assets. Uh, one example uh, of depreciation and how we can calculate depreciation is that if we, uh, if we get a truck or a vehicle, a car, and we purchased that vehicle in 100 pounds, we, we have the option, in, in fact, we need to recognize the cost of that, um, the, 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 that truck in 100 pounds. But we need to determine what is the, the life of that truck. Probably we determine that the, the, the life of that truck is five years. So we need to recognize during this, during, uh, this uh, five years, the, 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 lost, uh, the lost in the value of the, of the truck. So if we divide the 100 pounds divided by five years, that is the, the life uh, that we determine uh, in, in the case of the truck, it means that the depreciation every year will be 20. So we need to recognize the cost of the truck, but, but this decrease in value we need to recognize during the five years. So at the end, at the end of the five years, the cost of the truck will be zero. Even when we, we paid 100 pounds, because if we try to, to, to see the value in, in five years, probably the, the truck doesn't have a value or we can re recover the some some of the value of the truck but the value of the truck is not going to be 100 pounds the cost that we pay for it when we bought the truck the the value of the truck will be much more less and it's very easy as you see only we need to divide the cost that we pay for the truck divided by the life that we consider that the truck is going to have. And this amount will be the depreciation that we are going to recognize every, every year as an expense. And in the case of, and imagine if we decided to sell the truck in the, in, in maybe at the end of, the, of these five years, the and imagine according to the financial statements at the end of the of the fifth year the the cost of the truck will be zero and probably we can sell that truck in i don't know in 30 pounds so that 30 pounds because of the cost of the truck after the five years is zero the cost of the truck will be a revenue for us or in that case for the company, totally the, 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 the three pounds that we uh, will receive if we sell the truck in the year number six, for example, all the amount of the, of the truck will be uh, the, the 30 pounds. Or if we decided to sell the truck in the year number th uh, three, for example, it means that we 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 decrease the value the 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 100 minus the 60 the 60 pounds 20 each year and maybe the value of the of the of the truck at that moment uh, would be 40 and we and if we sell the truck in the year number 3 and we receive for for this truck uh, 30 pounds we will have a uh, 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 lost uh, because at the end in, in our financial statement, the value of the truck is um, 40 and we receive only 30. I don't know if it makes sense. Or imagine if at the, if at the 
third year we receive uh, 50 pounds instead of 30. It means that we will have a, 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 a revenue for uh, 10 pounds or, or the difference between the, the, the cost minus the depreciation. And if we compare this, this, this amount with the amount that we receive, if we sell the, the truck, this will be a, a revenue or this will be a loss in, in, in that operation, selling the truck. The truck. Um, so depreciation is recognizing in the financial statement in the, in the balance sheet. So if you see here, we have the, 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 the property and equipment. So imagine if we have equipment here, we need to recognize the depreciation. So every year, uh, here we can hear, here we can see, for example, equipment, uh, 50, 50,000, and less accumulated depreciation, that is the depreciation of the year. So it means that every year uh, the fixed assets are, are losing and a value, are losing value because of, of, of the time. So keep in mind that the depreciation is recognized in this segment of the balance sheet, but the depreciation is going to be, is always a, a decrease in, in the value of the assets. For that reason, we, we see that figure with uh, brackets. Okay, so this is a, this is the last example in case of the uh, adjustments that we can see uh, every every year. So, in fact, the precision because it's a very simple uh, process. Uh, sometimes the company uh, has that system uh, in which we can uh, put all, all the information of the fixed assets and then the system uh, calculates uh, the depreciation automatically. So even we, we, we don't need to do any more because some systems are very very powerful or very easy to use. In fact, we can set the precision uh, in probably at the beginning and probably tick a box in which we want to to that the program calculates every year the precision. So on that way, we, we will be less worried about doing that adjustments because probably the system uh, can do that adjustments automatically. But if, if it's not the case, we need to do the adjustment uh, manually. And in fact, we will need to check if the, the period of, of, of the life of the fixed asset is the correct, no? Because probably the system can do the, the, the adjustment automatically. But if we put incorrect information, uh, obviously the system is not going to detect that the, the information that we write in, in the system to, to have an autom automated process. So we need to be very careful in the case of uh, uh, if we have a, a, a system that recognizes the depreciation automatically, we need to pay attention uh, in the information that we put in that system. So uh, the topic number three. Uh, the number topic three is be able, uh, we are going to see uh, how we can prepare financial uh, final accounts for one only trader or a partnership. Uh, what is the purpose of preparing uh, final accounts? And 
we checked, we already checked uh, relevant adjustments, but we are going to see why the adjustments are important for a, under the perspective of a partnership of a trader or of, or of an investor. And we are going to see the most important financial statements uh, for a specific business or maybe in general business. Uh, those uh, are the topics that we are going to review uh, in this um, in, 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 in this uh, uh, section. So um, when we think about uh, preparing a final accounts, the main thing that probably I would think is uh, is the financial statements because final accounts means what 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 is the result of the company during a period so i would think that my answer could be in the financial statement i can i, I could see the results of a company if I see financial statements. And to in order to have financial statement, all the accountants and all the financial area need to prepare financial accounts. Uh, they, the, accountant, the accounting area uh, needs to, to do the, the adjustments, the adjustments that are necessary in order to have uh, and provide correct information. That information uh, in the financial assignments or in any financial report is going to help because uh, we, could, uh, we could see which is our revenue and if we can see which is the revenue of the company, we can be aware about the taxes that we need to pay or the taxes that uh, the, the authority is going to uh, return us. So, and additionally, if we have information that is correct, we, we pr probably we can uh, manage external uh, secure or external finance, maybe a loan, maybe if we want to participate in, I don't know, in, uh, in another business. So through financial statements or through financial reports, we, we can take decision. We can see which is a, pos which is a position in, in, of the company in, in terms of, of uh, financial aspects. Um, so basically, this is the purpose of preparing financial accounts, having that clear picture, having that whole picture of the performance of the company. And obviously, about uh, if we have the performance of the company, we, we will be able to take decisions uh, in order to let the company grow or maybe taking change the the strategic the business uh, the strategics in the strategic in terms of a business now uh, I, I i wrote the the main um, the most relevant uh, relevant adjustment even when even though when we uh, already discussed uh, deeply what are the most common adjustments just in, in to recap some adjustments uh, or the most common adjustments, uh, we, we can find, for example, the allowance uh, for that full accounts in, in the inventory or probably in, in if, if a client, uh, if we are uh, reflecting the risk if a client uh, didn't pay us. So we, we can have uh, 
this allowance in clients, or even we can have this this allowance in 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 inventory. Uh, another adjustment is when we are uh, recognizing recognizing the revenue that has not yet been billed. So probably we have uh, an income, but in the, in, at the moment that we are preparing the financial statement, probably we haven't received the, the invoice of that income. So we are very sure that we are going to receive the, 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 the income of, or, of the money, but probably we don't have the physical invoice. Another thing, another uh, adjustment, another important adjustment is uh, deferring re the recognition of the revenue that has been built, but has not yet been earned. It means is trying to think opposite uh, to, the, to the previous example. In this case, we, are, uh, we, we have the invoice in our, in our hands, but we don't have the the physical the, the 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 money physically so it's the opposite one thing is that we have the physical money we have received the money but we don't have the invoice and the other thing is that we we have the invoice but we don't have the cash so this is another adjustment as the same happens in terms of expenses, when we have the expense, when we incur in the expense, but, but probably we don't have the document to prove that expense, or probably we have the document to prove that expense, but we, but the money hasn't, hasn't uh, been paid. So uh, we, we haven't, probably made that pay, but we are aware that we incur in an expense. And the, uh, the other, the last uh, relevant adjustment is related to uh, recognizing prepaid expenses as an expense, as that is very related to accruals and prepayments. Um, here we have uh, the, the most important financial statements of a specific business organization. So in every organization, depending on the, the, the core of the organization, we, we are going to have different uh, financial statements. But the, the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow, and the statement of the shareholders equity are the most important and are uh, mandatory. So we need to have these four financial statements in every company. It doesn't matter the, the, the business or, or the sector. Probably in, for example, the financial sector, we are going to find another, I wouldn't say financial statement, but I would say another reports. Uh, probably in the financial sector, we need to, f to have another report in terms of um, annual report, or that is the annual report is more about the strategy of the company, is more about what the company does in the past, what, that, what is, what is uh, the vision of the company, a mission, a plans for the future, what is doing, what the company is doing in terms of uh, sust uh, sustainability or uh, environmental things. So I wouldn't say that is another financial uh, statement, but is another financial report that, for example, in the banking, in, in banking, we, we need, we can see. Or for example, imagine that is a company that is a public company that uh, that company is participating in a stock exchange. 100% sure that that company has this, uh, this 
for financial statement, but additionally to this financial statement, because it's a public company, a company that is in a stock exchange, this company needs to send uh, some formats to the stock exchange because it's public, because the information of the company it can be reviewed by any person, by an investor, by a sole investor or by a company. So in the case of public companies, we, we, will, uh, we will see another formats, uh, another documentation that uh, need to be sent to the stock exchange in the case of, remember, in the case of a public company. And this is the difference uh, between a normal company or in general and, uh, and in, in, in a specific sector that every, every, all the companies uh, have the four, the four fin most, fin most important financial statement, but additionally, they have another financial reports. Uh, another uh, important part of the financial statements are the uh, disclosure or, or the notes that we can find in every in, in, in every package of financial statements and basically the notes are uh, as, uh, like paragraphs that are describing, each section of the financial statements. Let's think, for example, in cash and cash equivalents. We can see probably in the balance sheet, the section cash and cash equivalents and the value, the amount of money. But in the footnotes or in the note, we can see that probably this cash and cash equivalent uh, section is um, uh, is made uh, because we have money in cash in a bank account, probably because the company has invested in gold, uh, probably because the company has uh, different currencies, euros, dollars, uh, pounds, yens. So in the footnotes or in the note that is prepared to explain in detail cash and cash equivalent, we will see in a very high detail how that section is composed. Or let's think, for example, in the case of inventory, we will see in the, in the financial statement, uh, uh, inventory, but probably in the footnote, we will see, okay, we have raw material, we have a, 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 a material in process, and we have the, the, the product, no, the, 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 the we, we, if we are, uh, if the company is creating shoes, for example, uh, the shoes that are already uh, done. So this is, this is another uh, important part in the financial statement, the notes or the footnotes. And uh, another uh, kind of financial reports could be development stage companies or front-end financial reporting in the case of the, the, the financial sector. And finally, uh, topic number four is very easy. It's more about uh, the, the characteristic of the professionals, in this case, the accountants, and, and the ethical behavior. Uh, as an accountant uh, or any other profession, we have a code of ethics is uh, the way in which uh, a professional uh, should um, act or is the behavior that a professional uh, should follow. So specifically in, in accountancy, we have th uh, four, four pillars. Uh, one of these is integrity. 
So all the accountants needs to we need to be honest and profession in our in all uh, our professional and business relationship. So integrity is equal to be honest. Another another uh, principle in the code of ethics of accountants is objectivity. We need to avoid the conflict of interest because as an accountant, uh, we are reflecting the financial situation of a company and imagine if we are like, uh, if we have, if we don't have that independence uh, of our, our opinion, probably we, as a, if, the, if, the, if the accountant doesn't have this objectivity, probably the accountant could move all the uh, some figures in the financial statement to reflect our uh, another reality that is not the truth. So for that reason, we need to avoid all the conflict of interest. Then we need to have confidentiality because of the information that the accountants manage is uh, sometimes very important and sometimes we need to keep in secret all the information that we are managing because uh, it would be dangerous for, for, for the stability of the company. What happened if, I don't know, if we have Apple and we have um, Samsung and if we, for an error, if we reveal uh, information uh, of Apple and Samsung notice that information, it could create a conflict between these two important uh, competitors. And finally, professional behavior. Uh, as an accountant, we need to follow uh, relevant laws and regulation, and probably the most important are the IFRS or the GAPS, uh, depending on the on the country. We need to follow that regulation because at the end, the regulation is set by by accounting bodies, and in order to have the same behavior if in all the accounts the accountants so and obviously this professional behavior is very related to uh, have a good reputation uh, in order to provide a good reputation to the profession of the accountant um and what would be the impacts if we don't have uh, that ethical behaviors, uh, probably scandals in the financial world, uh, for example, in terms of Enron, I'm pretty sure that you, you know the case of Enron in which the auditor um, emitted a very good opinion, but at the end, the Enron was fake. So, it created a very huge scandal because obviously the reputation of the external audit firm uh, was too bad at that moment uh, because the external auditor was uh, saying, okay, the company is, is, is correct and shows the, the financial reality, but at the end, uh, in the case of Enron, they uh, were discovered that Enron didn't exist. So that kind of situation decreased the credibility of the of the profession, the profession of of uh, the accountants. So for that, uh, regulatory bodies uh, has uh, have created a different uh, regulation and code of ethics and certifications. And, and in, in one of the surveys, uh, it, uh, is, it was found that 30% of the accountants uh, have uh, had felt pressure from the companies uh, to manipulate uh, financial statements. 
And in this slide, I wanted to show you the most important um, certification in terms of uh, accounting, uh, probably the most common and the, I wouldn't say that the easiest, but I feel that is the most complete certification is the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants or well known as ACCA. This, this is a very good certification. If you are interested on that, it's around two years. To, in order to get it. And some of the, of the models uh, are very, very simple. Uh, so I think that probably the last models are the most difficult. Uh, the ACCA uh, has 13, I guess, 13 exams and you need to, to pass those exams. And if you want to get the certification very soon, the, the um, the shortest peri period would be probably two years to get it. Another certification is the Charter Accountants of uh, Ireland. And I'm pretty sure another certification also very, very, very important, but more focus on uh, management, more focus on the decision making day every day is the Charter Institute of Management Accountants or SEMA. Uh, but for me, probably the most complete certification would be ACCA. And, and I'm pretty sure that every country or most of the countries have a, their own certification. Probably if you are in Russia, you can find a accounting body that can provide you the certification in Russia or in Mexico, or for example, the CPA in the USA, no? That, uh, probably is one is another uh, famous certification. And finally, uh, in order and to finish this um, this this model, uh, we're going to talk about the external audit and the basic process. audit. Uh, we need to understand that an external audit is an opinion that is provided by an independent uh, firm. You know the, the big four uh, that are obviously the most important or, or the most uh, recognized uh, external audit firms. And the objective of this external audit is uh, express an opinion of the financial statements because one thing is that the accounting area prepares the financial statements. And another thing is that a third party reviews that process and give an opinion and assurance and a certain level of assurance uh, in order to show the investors of the or, or, or the owners of the company that the financial statements are reflecting the financial position of a company. So it's very important to have external audit and is a very good practice. And some, for example, some banks ask for a external audit opinion in order to provide a, a loan or probably talking about, talking again, a public entity, they need to be audited by an external audit firm because it is part of the requirements of an stock exchange. So for that reason, it's very important to have the opinion of an external part of a of, or of a third part. Uh, the moment, uh, the moment in which uh, an external audit is taking is taking place, is uh, uh, in the past. It means because uh, the external auditor is going to give an opinion of the previous year, the the year that has gone. So for that reason, we say that the moment is the past. And the audience, why an external opinion is important because the opinion is going to be 
uh, read by investor and general public, probably if it's a public company again, and regulators like, for example, Bank of uh, the Central Banks or uh, the Treasury. So this is the audience who is going to read the, the opinion that the external auditor is going to give investors, the general public and the regulators. As framework used, the external auditors uh, use a framework or rules that are set by a international body. And that framework is called international auditing standards. That basically is like a kind of guide, guidance in which the external auditor uh, needs to develop all the work in the external audit. And personnel, uh, normally that an external audit firm is hired by the company or the financial group or the holding of the group. And we have a uh, different stages when the external audit is uh, being prepared. And the number one is preparing the external audit plan. Uh, what are the times or what are the months that the company is going to receive the external auditors? This, number two, understanding the company. Basically, in this moment, the external auditor understand uh, all the risk and all the, the risk in terms of inherent risk, uh, competitors, uh, regulation, uh, behavior of the company, controls, all the all the aspects of the company is 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 understand understood in the second stage. And number three is asset, asset risk that in this in this in this stage the auditor is determining um, if the if the external auditor is going to rely on controls or if he is going to review documentation. If, if the control, if the external auditor determines that the internal control of the company is good, the external auditor is going to review less documentation. But if the external auditor determines that uh, the control is not good enough, uh, the external auditor is going to review more documentation. Then performing control tests uh, and then finalizing audit uh, findings. Uh, what, what are the issues that uh, the external auditor discover? And if that issue, issues have an impact that could change the figures that we can see in the financial statements. And number six is issuing the audit report in which we can find the opinion of the external auditor. If the company reflects the reality, the financial reality, or if the company has any issue, or if the company uh, gave all the information in order to guarantee uh, uh, an opinion uh, from the external audit, or if the audi external auditor has have any issues in order to get access to the information. And for that, he, he I mean, the external auditor cannot give uh, an opinion. So uh, till here we have uh, we 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 finish this this model. So it was a very very huge model, and probably difficult to understand in only one or or two hour two hours two hours in the pre previous lesson and one hour in this lesson. But check the presentation. Uh, if you don't have the presentation, please ask the school to if they can send the presentation and let me know if you have any other doubt. So uh, till here we finish. And I hope you, you have a very good weekend. So yes, read, read the presentation. 
uh, look for more information because probably this information is not enough, but it's a very good guidance. So I hope to I hope you see you next class and have a good weekend. Bye.